Probably one of the most confusing terms used in networking today is the term Ethernet. People say, oh, I've got an Ethernet cable or an Ethernet network card or I've got an Ethernet switch and technically that's not exactly accurate. Ethernet is nothing more than really a book. Now, it's not this book. This book is my popular all-in-one CompTIA exam N10005 exam guide 5th edition available at all your popular local bookstores, but Ethernet is really a book. And when I say it's a book, it's a book that defines what type of cables we're going to be using. How do you design a network card? What do the frames look like? How big are the frames? How often are they signaled? All kinds of stuff like that. So really what Ethernet is, is a book that handles layer one and layer two of the OSI or just layer one of the TCP IP model that says, how do you make a network? So pretty much not all, but most of the hardware that's set up for a network is going to be under the Ethernet standard. Now what you need to appreciate, Ethernet is massively predominant. Today it's an Ethernet world, but back in the old days, we would have things with names like Token Ring and ArcNet and a bunch of other networking technologies, which Ethernet has pretty much completely kicked out of the water. Also keep in mind that there are other alternatives. For example, cable companies don't use Ethernet. They have a standard called DOSIS. And if you're working with telephone companies, they don't use Ethernet either. They'll use things with names like DSL. So the important thing to appreciate is that while Ethernet is very, very, very dominant, it's not completely the entire internet. So with that understanding in mind, let's first of all appreciate this. So here is my Ethernet frame, all right? So the purple parts are the Ethernet frame. The thing you need to appreciate here is that this frame can be traveled across all kinds of different media. Ethernet is not just a piece of unshielded twisted pair. Ethernet comes in lots and lots of different flavors and lots and lots of different technologies. So if you take a look here, for example, so here's a very, very old Ethernet card. It's so old that here's the RJ45 connector, but this BNC connector is actually for some very old, very obsolete types of Ethernet. Now, so there's two different types of connectors here. There's a coax connector, and there's also unshielded twisted pair. It doesn't really matter from a signaling standpoint what you use. Let me show you something here. This is also an Ethernet card, and you'll notice that it uses fiber optic. In this case, it has two SC connectors. The important thing to appreciate is that the Ethernet frame is never going to change. No matter what type of media I use, what, no matter what type of speed I go at, you get back there. I am going to always have the exact same type of frame. And because of that, we can do some cool things. Like take a look at this guy. This is an Ethernet media converter. So it can connect on one side to a network that's running unshielded twisted pair and then on the other side connect to a network that's running fiber optic. The important thing to appreciate is that this simply converts the data from electrical pulses to light. The frame itself never changes. So the ethernet frame is the great standard aspect to all of ethernet. So if the ethernet frame stays the same, ethernet's been around for gosh, 30 years now. And the early versions of Ethernet ran at a specific speed, in particular about 10 megabits per second. Now, the first really common version of Ethernet that really made Ethernet the thing that it is today is called 10 base T. So let's take a look at 10 base T. When we see this nomenclature here, what we're talking about, and you need to recognize this, the 10 stands for the speed that it's running at, and it's always in megabits per second. So this is 10 megabits per second, Base stands for how the media is being transmitted. You basically have two choices, baseband and broadband. Broadband is kind of like your cable television where you have individual channels, individual frequencies that are being propagated down a single wire. Baseband, you don't have frequencies. There's no channels with ethernet. It's just one big channel and it runs everything. And the T stands for twisted pair. And that's the wonderful UTP, cable that we use for Ethernet. So let's be comfortable with this nomenclature and let's take a quick peek at 10 base T. I've got them right here. So the cornerstone of 10 base T is going to be a hub. So I've got a hub here and we just plug into the hub anywhere we want and then we plug into a network card. Now of course I'm not throwing in any structured cabling here. 
and we've certainly gone through this process in earlier episodes, but pretty much this is all it boils down to is a connection something like this. To appreciate how hubs work though, I'm gonna switch gears here for a minute and let me change the set and we're gonna talk about hubs. The important thing to appreciate is that 10 base T was based on the concept of a hub. A hub is nothing more than a multi-port repeater. So I'm gonna, I'm kinda making a hub here. What we have is a four port hub. Now I'm actually the hub, we're, we're inside the hub here, okay? So what's gonna be taking place is I've got computers plugged into all four of these connections, all right? So what's gonna happen is one computer is gonna send out an ethernet frame. Ah, okay, here comes an ethernet frame. Now my job as a hub is to take this frame and I'm gonna put it into my little box here. And I repeat the signal. So what I'm gonna do is I've taken the original signal that came in and I've made three copies of it. Now the important thing to appreciate here is that I'm not sending the signal back on the port that it came in from. So I'm only sending it back on the ones that it didn't come in from and that's, as, and that's really all I have to do as a hub. The 10 base T standard defined a lot of very, very specific values. In particular, 10 base T ran at 10 megabits per second. You could have no more than 1,024 computers per hub or broadcast domain is really what they meant. And the distance between your hub and your individual nodes couldn't be any more than 100 meters. Now, 10 base T also used cat three or better cabling. You need to know all of these stats for the network plus, you're gonna see them. Now, Fiber optic also came into play during the 10 base ethernet period. And that fiber optic was known as 10 base FL, although CompTIA sometimes just calls it 10 base F. It's the same thing. 10 base FL is pretty much identical to 10 base T, well, with two exceptions. Number one, it uses multi-mode fiber optic cabling. And also, instead of 100 meters, you have up to two kilometers between your hub and any one individual node. Take the time and memorize these, they're on the Network Plus.